Genre, historical fiction. Essential question. How can one person change the way you think? Harry's Great Idea by Liz Rawlings. Illustrated by Margaret Freed. Chapter 1. A Social Studies Lesson. Harry strolled to school. He was almost 10 years old, and he loved baseball. As he walked, he thought about the birthday party that his mother was organizing for him. They'd decided whom they would invite. They'd decided that the cake would be decorated with a baseball diamond. The party hats would be baseball caps. And of course, they were going to play baseball. They'd also hired a magician to entertain everyone. I can't wait, thought Harry. It's going to be the best party ever. At school, Harry went on daydreaming about his party. He hardly heard a word of what the teacher was saying. Harry, have you been listening? asked the teacher. What can you tell me about Eleanor Roosevelt? Harry thought quickly. She was First Lady of the United States, he said. Now she works hard for human rights. My mom thinks Eleanor Roosevelt is great. The teacher smiled. Very good, she said. Eleanor Roosevelt also did everything she could to help President Roosevelt. She has represented our country at the United Nations since 1946. After school, Harry went to the recreation center. He played table tennis with his friend, Gary, and talked about his party. I'm inviting ten friends, including you, he said, and a magician is coming. That sounds like fun. I wish I could have a party, said Gary. Why don't you ask your folks, said Harry. I have, said Gary. They can't afford to have a party for me this year. Oh, that's too bad, said Harry. And he meant it. On his way home, Harry thought about Gary missing out on a party. He remembered that Eleanor Roosevelt organized dances for kids in New York City. Thinking more, Harry wondered if he could hold his birthday party for all the boys and girls at the rec center. Every kid with a birthday this month could come. Everyone could bring along a party game idea. And the mothers could make the food. It was a great idea. He would see what his parents thought. Harry's family talked about his idea. His sister Anna was not sold on the idea. She thought there would be too many kids. His mom and dad thought it would be fun. Oh boy, said Harry, this will be the best party ever. Don't count your chickens before they hatch, said his dad. We'll have to see what the other parents think about it. Okay, dad, said Harry, grinning. I'll hold my horses, but I'm excited all right. We could have it the same day as the party we've planned, said his mother. We've already hired the magician. Guess we might as well, said Anna, with a sigh. She was coming around to the idea. Chapter 2. Planning the Party Next day, Harry got home from school to find his mother reading recipes. I've been on the telephone to the rec center, she said. The party's on, and there are plenty of volunteers who want to help. Swell. Thanks, Mom, said Harry. He thought about his favorite party food. Mom, will you bake the birthday cake at the rec center, he asked. I'd expect an award for bravery to make a birthday cake in the rec center kitchen, Mom said. I'll make it here at home, and we'll take it over. I can't wait, said Harry. He went to his room to play on his party game. There were eight children with birthdays that month. Harry invited them all to the party. Their families and friends were invited too. No one had refused their invitation, so there would be about 80 people. The night before the party, Harry felt nervous. 
If the party went badly, it would be his fault for suggesting it. But his doubt was only temporary. Before he went to sleep, he was already thinking about the fun he would have. He dreamed of cakes and balloons and streamers. Chapter 3 Fun Head by All The party was in full swing and Harry was enjoying himself. He looked around the room with amazement at so many boys and girls. They were batting balloons and munching party food. Gary came over. You're great for organizing this, Harry, he said. Gee, thanks, said Harry. Actually, I got the idea from Eleanor Roosevelt. She used to organize dances. There was plenty of delicious party food. Harry's mom had made strawberry shortcake as well as a birthday cake. There was lemonade to drink. The baker had donated a huge cake with happy birthday frosted on top. The toy shop had donated a present for each of the birthday children too. Everyone thought that the party should become a regular event. The magician entertained everyone for half an hour. He made cards and coins disappear from his hand. Somehow he found them again behind someone's ear or in their back pocket. Everyone stood around the cake to sing happy birthday. The names of the birthday boys and girls came out jumbled, although Harry heard his name clearly. Then they played party games. They played quiet games like memory and noisy ones like musical chairs. They also played a game of baseball. It was great fun. To finish, the magician played the piano and people sang along. Chapter 4. Reports on the Party At school, Harry told his class about the party. Eleanor Roosevelt certainly inspires many people, said their teacher. What qualities does she have that inspire you all? A few students put up their hands. Bravery, said one. It takes bravery to go on standing up for others. Perseverance, said another. She keeps trying no matter what. Kindness, said Harry. Eleanor Roosevelt cares about other people. Then the local newspaper sent a photographer to Harry's house to take a photo of him. It was published with the headline, Birthday Boy Behind Big Party. Harry stuck the article on the wall in his bedroom. His mom put an arm around his shoulders. I'm proud of you for organizing the party, Harry, she said. You've really started something. It takes a leader to do that. Thanks, Mom, said Harry. It was a lot of fun. And maybe I'll get invited to the parties in May, June, and July. Eleanor Roosevelt. Born 1884, died 1962. Anna Eleanor Roosevelt was born into the wealthy, powerful Roosevelt family. So she was involved in politics from a young age. At 19, Eleanor was interested in helping others, not just going to dances and parties. She visited poor families in New York City. She investigated the working conditions in factories. Franklin D. Roosevelt invited Eleanor to his 21st birthday party. They fell in love and were married in 1905. Caption, Eleanor Roosevelt with President Roosevelt. Franklin D. Roosevelt became president in 1933. He stayed in office until 1945. This was a time of depression and war. As first lady, Eleanor Roosevelt visited workers in factories and mines. She talked to the troops. She did useful things like volunteering in soup kitchens. Actions like these made her loved by the people. Ordinary people felt that she knew what they were going through. After her husband's death in 1945, Eleanor continued to advise the new president, Harry Truman. In 1946, 
President Truman appointed her to the U.S. delegation to the United Nations, U.N. Caption, Eleanor Roosevelt was loved by many people. At the U.N., Eleanor led the committee that wrote the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The declaration says that everyone has the right to live in freedom and safety. The U.N. passed the declaration in 1948. Throughout her life, Eleanor was a leader. She fought hard for the rights of women and African Americans. Believing that all people are equal, she worked to bring about changes for the benefit of everyone. Caption, Eleanor Roosevelt holds a copy of the Declaration of Human Rights. <laughs>